All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about um, finding the set of all Predo optimal allocations or Predo sets, or what we call it contract curve. So the set of all Predo efficient allocations is called Predo set or contract curve. Okay. So in an Edgeworth box, in any exchange economy, um, well, agent A is located here, agent B is located here. Um, usually, uh, well, obviously, depending on the uh, indifference curves, if they have, um, you know, nice convex indifference curves, as in the Cobb Douglas utility function, the contract curve is going to be a curve connecting this point and this point. I mean, a point where agent A gets nothing and B gets everything. And the point where agent B gets nothing, A gets everything, are pretty efficient. And everything in between, according to some curve, is also pretty efficient. And all those points are called Predo set or contract curve. And the nice thing about is that all these points, the indifference curve of agent B and indifference curve of agent A, are tangent to each other. Another pick another point. Indifference curve of agent B and indifference curve of agent A are tangent to each other. Pick another point. Indifference curve of agent B and indifference curve of agent A are tangent to each other. All right. So remember, the indifference curve are tangent to each other means the better than set for agent A and B, they are intersecting at only one point, which is the point of tangency, and therefore mutual gain from trade at that point is not possible, all right? Well, you may ask, well, if this point is pretty efficient, how come this point is also pretty efficient? I mean, what if they move, it, once they are at this point, if they trade and come up to this point, uh, can't they be better off? No, that's the whole point. If you move, if they are here, but they make an exchange and come back here, uh, not come back, end up here, it is going to make agent B happier, obviously, because it's farther away from the origin, but it will make agent A worse off because it's closer to his origin. All right. So therefore, given that they are here, there is no win-win situation. All right. So the trade must stop. That's the whole point. Um, so the question is, how do we calculate the contract curve or Pareto set? Well, simple. Use the um, the the each agent's the indifference curve, indifference curve of agent A is tangent is tangent to uh, indifference curve, indifference curve of agent B. What does tangency mean? If two curves are tangent to each other at some point, it means if I draw a tangency line, the slope of the tangency line is the same. So what is the slope of a tangency line or the slope of an indifference curve at some point? It's the marginal rate of substitution for agent A has to be equal to, because that's the slope of the indifference curve, it has to be equal to the slope of the indifference curve of agent B, the marginal rate of substitution of agent B. All right. So what is the marginal rate of substitution of agent A? Simple. It's minus marginal utility of A um, of the first good and the marginal utility of agent A for the second good has to be equal to minus marginal utility of agent B for the first good and the marginal utility of agent B for the second good. So the, the negatives will cancel out. So then I can solve this problem. Uh, let's give an example. So let's suppose the example is the following. Initial endowment for agent A is two and, well, two and one, let's suppose. All right. Initial endowment for B is one and two. So there are three good one, three good two initially. And then the utility functions of agent B and agent A are, well, let's say, it's the square root of x times y, or 
x to the power one half, y to the power one half. All right, so that's a standard Cobb-Douglas utility function. Well, uh, those can ne negatives will cancel out. So what is the marginal utility of agent A with respect to good one? Um, by the way, so y, x, y. So, uh, so let's call it x1 times x2, all right? So it's x1 to the power one half, x2 to the power one half. So let's stick to the notation um, we used earlier. Um, well, the agent A's utility, I'm uh, oh, sorry, the marginal utility of agent A is one half. So with respect to x1, so x1 to the power minus one half times x2 to the power one half. So this is marginal utility of agent A with respect to good one. And the marginal utility with respect to good two is x2 minus one half, x1 one half, all right? Well, the marginal rate of, uh, marginal utility for agent B is one half, x1 minus one half, x2 one half, and then one half, x2 minus one half, x1 one half. Here's one thing, all right? Um, this utility function, I mean, here you, you may see is like, I am writing exactly the same thing over and over, so everything will cancel out, so it's one equal one. Don't, don't make such a silly mistake. Here, these are actually, so the agent A's utility, remember, depends on his own consumption of good, oh, uh, x1, a, x, 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 oh. Oh, I hate this, um, so maybe I better just change the notation, all right? Sorry, once again. So let's say rather than x1, x2, let me use xy, all right? So this is x1 half, y1 half. So whenever you see x1, it's going to be x. Whenever you see x2, it's going to be y. So let me just rewrite very quickly. So it's 1 half, x minus 1 half, y1 half divided by one half, y minus one half, x one half, equals two. So here, these are belonging to agent A, all right? So be careful. And then when I calculate agent B's um, marginal uh, utilities, this is one half, the x B minus one half, y B one half, divided by one half, x B uh, one half, y b minus one half all right so if you simplify those how one half cancel out all right x e goes denominator y a comes up so basically if you do the math you're going to have y a divided by y b oh x a i'm sorry equals y b divided by x b all right so that's what we call contract curve contract curve. That's it. Um, find the contract curve. Here is the contract curve. Um, in this question, uh, the marginal rate of substitution for agent A is y over x, and the marginal rate of substitution for agent B is her y over her x. All right. So then uh, I would like to... Um, I can check, for example, if the initial endowment is proto-optimal or not. Well, if it is on the contract curve, it means it is proto-optimal, proto-efficient. If it is not on the contract curve, I mean, if it doesn't satisfy this, it's not proto-efficient. So at WA, what is the marginal rate of substitution for agent A? Uh, remember, YA divided by y, uh, XA, all right? So this is Y, this is X for agent A. So one over two. Here, marginal rate of substitution of agent B at W is two divided by one, all right? So here it is one over two. For agent B, it's two. Are they equal, one half and two? No, they're not. So therefore, this initial endowment is not proto-efficient. It means it's, uh, this is three by three. I mean, it's a square. Uh, therefore, it's somewhere here. So it's not on the contract curve, so it doesn't satisfy this. Hence, this is not proto-efficient. Well, um, can I say, can I find all the points uh, in, in, in the contract curve? Yes, I can. So I will do 
a bit of manipulation. How? Well, remember those um, allocations must satisfy the feasibility. Use feasibility. Feasibility. So what is feasibility in this case? Agent A and agent B, the consumption of Y, uh, has to be equal to total number of good Y. So how many good Y? So these, these are good X, these are good Ys. So how many good Y they have? Three. Agent uh, A's and B's consumption of good X, so XA plus XB, has to be equal to total number of good X, which is three. So you know what? Whenever you see um, YB, all right, so send everything to the other side. So it's going to be 3 minus YA. So whenever you see YB, just plug 3 minus YA. And whenever you see XB, 3 minus, just plug 3 minus XA. All right, so use that contract curve. YA divided by XA equals 2. YB is 3 minus YA divided by XB, 3 minus XA. All right? So, let's continue a few more steps. Do the uh, cross product. So, bear with me. It's going to come up to uh, something very simple. So, do the cross product. So, what do I have? I have 3 YA minus YA times XA equals to uh, 3XA minus XAYA, all right? So as long as, I mean, regardless of whether these are positive or not, uh, zero, uh, these are just gonna cancel out, right? It's minus XY, this is minus XY. And so I wrote, I wrote everything as a function of agent A's consumption. So therefore they cancel out. Um, and then three and three will cancel out. So XA equals YA. Well, that's it. So this is a curve. What does that mean? That means if you remember for this example, the contract curve, uh, the Edgeworth bucks is a three by three bucks. All right. So this is A, this is B. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, uh, oops, one, two, three, and then one, two, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, right? One, two, three. So therefore, XA equals YA means, so it starts here, zero, zero, one, one, all right? And then two, two, and then three, three. So basically, uh, this is, uh, this is X equals Y line, uh, is the, the XA equals YA, is the contract curve, is the contract curve. So it is a curve, all right? So all I did is wrote everything as a function of agent A's. I could write everything as agent B's uh, uh, good one, good X and good Y, but I just use the agent A. So that's it. So as long as agent A consumes the same amount of good X and good Y, all these allocations are proto efficient. If they consume something where agent A and B are consuming different amount of good Y and good X, well, then it's not proto efficient, which makes sense, right? The, um, the marginal rate of substitution uh, being same means the way they trade each good, right, the marginal rate of substitution. So I substitute one good with another at that ratio. And our ratios are the same. So I would like to have more of good X um, for, the, for good Y, but it's the same ratio. If my ratio and your ratio is the same, there's no way we can make a trade. So those ratios should be different and if so, then we can make a trade and, and sort of uh, uh, we both win from trade. And, and that's sort of intuitively why the uh, margin rate of substitutions being equal to each other uh, is, is critical for determining proto efficient allocations. All right, so this is exactly how we calculate proto efficient allocations through a numerical example. I hope that was clear.